Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video I'm going to be talking about possibly the best ever reusable coffee cup. First of all, I just wanted to talk about the difference between travel cups and reusable coffee cups because this is an area that causes some confusion as the names tend to be used interchangeably but they're actually two separate things. As I mentioned in my recent blog post about this, which you can read at coffeeblog.co.uk forward slash cups, travel cups are intended for keeping your coffee or tea or whatever secure and hot or cold, but not at the same time, that'd be daft, until you get around to drinking it. And the key features of travel cups tend to be heat retention and being leak proof. Reusable cups, on the other hand, were created mainly as an antidote to disposable cups. There are some that claim similar insulation and leak proof features as travel mugs, but a lot of the reusable coffee cups out there perform slightly better than disposable cups in these areas, but they're not really made with that in mind. So just keep this in mind. If you're wanting something to keep your brew hot that you can launch in your bag and drink in a couple of hours, you'll want the travel cup. If you're wanting an alternative to a disposable cup so you can drink your brew almost straight away, but in something that's nicer to drink out of and is kinder to the environment, then you want a reusable cup. Also, it's important to remember that a lot of the travel cups keep drinks at close to the brew temperature for quite some time. And most people don't drink coffee at brew temperature. I know some people who do, who I refer to as having asbestos mouths, but most people let the coffee cool down a bit before drinking it. And in a travel mug, it could be two or three hours before it's at the temperature you like to drink your coffee at. Anyway, with that said, what do you think I might be referring to as possibly the best ever reusable coffee cup? Am I talking about this, the Keep Cup Brew? No, don't get me wrong, I like these. I much prefer drinking from glass than from plastic. And before you remind me that the lid is plastic, yeah, it is, but I'd take the lid off. I wouldn't drink from the lid unless I was driving. I mean, what? No, of course I wouldn't drink coffee while driving. I would pull over and drink my coffee, obviously. But usually I'd take the lid off. But yeah, keep cups are great, but these aren't what I'm talking about, mainly because of the cost. This extra small six ounce keep cup cost me 20 quid. I'm not talking about the various similar cups that are inspired by keep cup either. What I'm talking about is this, a jar of Nutella, or specifically the 200 gram glass jars of Nutella. Why do I think these are possibly the best reusable coffee cups ever? They come with 200 grams of chocolate spread, the dishwasher safe, microwave safe, they have a lid, and they're the cheapest glass reusable cup I've ever seen. In fact, for the price of this glass six ounce keep cup, you can buy this many jars of Nutella. 11 to be specific if you get them for £1.70 which is what I pay for them. So they're about £1.70 you can get them from most supermarkets and the bonus is you've got 200 grams of Nutella to shove in your face before you can use it as a cup or if you're not keen on chocolate spread just scoop it out make a cheesecake or something and if you don't like that send it to me because I'll eat it but I'm sure you won't need to search too long to find someone who will gladly eat it for you especially if you've got kids. We've used these as cups in our house for a few years now. I've mentioned them a few times in blog posts and I just think they're ace. They're good to use as small glasses in the summer for barbecues, etc. too, as a lid keeps out wasps and flies that might be on the hunt for gin and tonic. They're actually quite solid little cups. The glass is just about as thick as any standard glass. The lids aren't great. You do need to keep your hand on them if you're walking around with them as the edges aren't quite as tight fitting as the keep cup lids are and other reusable coffee cup lids tend to be. They'll comfortably, comfortably hold an eight ounce coffee. So the five for flat white, cappuccino, espresso, espresso macchiato, and so on. And yet they don't have a band and it's not dual walled insulated glass, but if you're using them for milkies with the milk steam to the normal 65 degrees Celsius, you'll probably find they're no problem to hold. If you're using them for small Americano or long black, you can get bands that will fit. They're about 73 mil in diameter. And if you want a cork band, the Keep Cup cork bands will fit. If you go to the Keep Cup website, click on spare parts and select the band for the six ounce glass Keep Cup. It takes a bit of effort, but they do fit like that. These bands are £5.50, but still that makes a total price £7.20, so not bad. The silicon keep cup bands are slightly cheaper, they're £4. And if you have a look online, you'll find various other bands that'll probably fit. If you did have a keep cup brew, but you broke it as I did, then using one of these is actually a really good idea, as the band will probably fit, depending on the size of keep cup that you broke. And the lids fit too. They don't end up being completely straight, but they do the job. So they fit 
but it's at a bit of an angle. It'll still be just as leak proof as the glass keep cups are. It just doesn't look quite as cool. Well, I suppose it looks like someone wearing a beret sort of a jaunty angle. By the way, if you do this, don't properly clean the Nutella jar before you use it for the first time. Leave the Nutella all over the inside of the jar and make a flat white in it or cappuccino and enjoy one of the best mochas you'll ever drink. A bonus tip, steam the milk in the Nutella jar so you end up with a chocolate milk and then pull your shot into this for a mocha macchiato. I've done this and it's mega. For chocolate overload, put another spoonful of Nutella into the steamed milk and then pull the shot on top of that. Thank you very much for watching and please don't forget to click the like button. Thanks. A recent study has shown that early rice farming is probably responsible for the domestication of the red jungle fowl into what we now know as the chicken. And this probably started as early as 1500 BC in Southeast Asia. And this has absolutely nothing to do with clicking the like button. I know, but click it anyway. Thanks. And if you've enjoyed this video, why not click here to watch another one? And don't forget to become an official Coffee Botherer. You need to click this image around here somewhere of my face to subscribe. Tatty bye.